Scripture this morning comes from the book of Genesis, and it begins in chapter 8, 28, with verse 10, where it says, Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you. And will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid. And he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite you to remain seated as we sing our next hymn, which is about climbing Jacob's Ladder. Some of you know that song, a few of you know that song, some of you grew up singing that song, Jacob's Ladder, and if you've ever wondered where it came from, it came from Genesis chapter 28 that we're talking about today. We're starting a new series today called Dream On. We're going to be talking about dreaming great dreams, not only the dreams that we have for our lives, but also God's dreams. And we're going to be looking at, at stories in the Bible about great dreams, dreamers in the Bible, and uh, throughout the scriptures, God uses dreams to connect with people and to visit with people. And so we're going to be talking about Jacob's dream at uh, a place called Bethel, which, um, you know, Jacob's dream there is, is to, to set it in context, uh, Jacob's on the run, because Jacob is probably the least likely person that God would choose to have a dream for. You know, Jacob is, is the, one of the biggest scoundrels in the Bible. He's a deceiver. He's a guy that's grabbing for himself. And even when he was born, he grabbed his, he was a twin. He, he grabbed his brother's ankle, you know, coming out of the womb. He's like, he's like no, I'm going to go first. And, you know, Trying to, trying to beat his brother um, to be the firstborn. But, you know, it, it, somebody said they should have called him grabby because he just he started grabbing from the get-go. So, so Jacob is, is this scoundrel of a guy. And why is he on the run? Well, he has managed to, with his mother's aid, to deceive his father, her husband, Isaac. Remember, Jacob is the the grandson of Abraham, he's Isaac's son, and um, his mother, I mean, he's his mother's favorite, and the mother conspires with him to steal his brother Esau's birthright, 
which is a big deal. It's, it's the family blessing. It's the, the place of the firstborn son to carry the birthright. And he's, he's, um, he's, I mean, you talk about, I mean, these people put the fun in dysfunctional in terms of families. I mean, the, these people are the original dysfunctional family. It, it's, a, it's an amazing story of deceit and lies and treachery. And it's amazing that God works through even people like them. And hey, let's be honest, God works through even people like us to accomplish God's dreams. But God works through, through Jacob's life. And, and so Jacob's on the run. His mother says, you stole the birthright. He's out to get you. He's not gonna be happy about this. You probably ought to leave town for a little while. Go and, and get a wife. And, and so he, she sends him. And that, that in and of itself is a whole other story you'll have to read about in, in Genesis because that's pretty wild too. So anyway, it, it, it is, this is this crazy story. And in the middle of it, you know, Jacob's on the run. And here's this, this time he lays down. He, he takes us, he's, he's, it's nighttime. He's tired. He's on the run. He, he takes a stone and, and sleeps on this, uses that for a pillow. And I was reading this and, and thinking about it. I was thinking, I've slept on pillows like that, hotel rooms. It's like, that is not the kind of pillow I like to sleep on. But if, if you like a stone for a pillow, more power to you. But that's, he couldn't sleep very well. I think that's probably why he had a dream. He had a stone for a pillow. And so he's, he has this dream. And it's an amazing dream. It's a, it's a dream about a ladder that goes from heaven to earth. It's almost like there's a stairway to heaven, to use a Led Zeppelin phrase. Um, and I love the idea that, of this stairway to heaven, this ladder to heaven. And, and he sees angels ascending and descending from this ladder. And then suddenly God is with him in this place. And God's saying, I'm with you, and I have great dreams for your life, and I'm going to, to make your descendants, you know, multiple. You're, you're going to be like the dust of the earth. It's, there's going to be so many descendants, north, south, east, west, and through your family, all the families, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. I mean, you talk about a dream, you know, a vision. Through your family, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. And then he, um, he just says, I'm with you. I'll, I'll keep you. Remember, I'm, I'm the God of, that made a covenant with your grandfather, Abraham, with your father, Isaac. I'm that same God, and I'm with you, and I'll be with you. And Jacob wakes up from his dream and, and he, he's stunned, he's, he's amazed. He says, you know, surely God was in this place and I didn't even know it. You ever had an experience like that where you, you're doing something and then out of the blue you experience some, it's like this divine presence, it's like this, this moment in, in space and time and, and it's, it's like heaven and earth are not so distant. It's like there's a connection, this, this ladder of connection between heaven and earth, and, and you experience the divine presence. God is with you. It's like, I didn't even know God was here, and God was here. It's like those, those two disciples that were walking along in, in Luke's gospel. He tells the story after the, after the crucifixion of Jesus, how these, these two were walking along, and the stranger joins them on the road to Emmaus, and how they didn't even recognize the Lord was with them. And then suddenly he's revealed to them and they say, man, did not our hearts burn while we talked with him on the road? I mean, the Lord was with us and we didn't even know it. You ever had an experience like that where you look back on a situation and you realize the Lord was with me and I didn't even know that the Lord was with me. But surely God is in this place. And, he, and he's so blown away, he says, how awesome is this place? He builds a sanctuary, a, a, a little temple there, 
and to, to commemorate the moment because sometimes our experiences with God, you know, to, to build a, a sanctuary or a temple, it's, it's a way of reminding ourselves, ourselves of the presence of God in this place. But you don't need, you know, a sanctuary only to experience that. This helps to have a sanctuary in which we experience the presence of God, but, but it's not limited. We're not limited by a space or a place. God's presence is with us wherever we go. And so Jacob has this experience. So what do these dreams tell us? I mean, I think, I think this dream tells us a couple of things. First of all, that God, you know, sometimes uses dreams that, that the, the veil between heaven and earth is not as pronounced as we think. And that, that idea of the ladder from heaven is, to me, God's way of communicating with with Jacob that, you know, God is very near and not so separated. We tend to think of heaven way up there and, and we're way down here, but, you know, not so separated. There's, there's a connection, a ladder or a stairway, a connection between God and, and us, and, and, and God is present with us. Another thing about dreams is that, that I think God uses dreams to call us to something higher and better. God calls us to something higher and better. You know, it's easy to settle. It's easy to settle for what everyone else is doing. It's easy to respond as other people respond. It's easy to do what everyone else is doing. But Christians are called to be those uncommon people who strive for something higher and better. And I think God uses dreams to challenge us to a higher and better, to aspire to something more than what we are. Sometimes God works in our dreams to, to challenge us to aspire to loftier goals than just living like everybody else. Hey, anybody can be average, you know. Anybody can be average. God calls Christians to do life differently. God calls Christians to, to aspire to something more. And, and this whole idea of this connection is that it's not just us going to heaven one day after we die. The whole idea of this, and it, it's throughout the Bible, is, is this idea of heaven coming down to earth, that our lives here on earth might reflect more heavenly values might reflect more a, a heavenly way of life and the way we treat each other and the way that we care about one another, that our lives might reflect more of this heavenly spirit that God calls us to. I think God also uses dreams to bring healing and also challenge. So sometimes God reminds us of things past and sometimes things present and sometimes things to come in dreams. And God reveals those things to us sometimes. Um, you know, the, there's that famous story, maybe you heard it during the Christmas season, Christmas Carol, that it, it talks about the visitation of Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future on Ebenezer Scrooge and, and those, those ghosts of Christmas past, the dreams that he was having about the past, the present, the future. I think God works in that way through dreams, sometimes to, to bring understanding and healing about our past. God speaks to Jacob and, and says to him, you know, I'm, I'm the God of your ancestor Abraham and your father Isaac. He's reminding him of this past relationship with his family. And then sometimes it's about present circumstances, God revealing that God is with us in whatever we're going through presently. Jacob experiences God's presence where he is, and he's blown away by the fact that God is with him where he is. Even though he's on the run from cheating his brother and cheating his father out of his brother's birthright, that God's still with him. God still loves him. God still cares about him. And God's communicating that, I think, through this dream to, to remind him, I have not left your side. I'm with you. And then God challenges Jacob through this, this vision for the future. As he says, 
through you and your family, I'm going to bless the entire world. I'm going to bless all the families on earth through your family. So I, here's something I, I was trying to think about this week about dreams because I think a lot of us have dreams for our lives. We have dreams of what we'd like to see or what we'd like to do. You have a dream about what you aspire to do, a goal that you set for yourself, and you set out to accomplish that goal. And that's, I mean, I think that's what we do in life, and I think that's how life works best when we aspire, we, we have a dream, a goal. What's the difference between our dream and a divine dream, a godly dream. I think, I think God's dreams for us always involve our blessing others. It's not just about us or, or us individually being lifted up, but it's, it's how God will use us to be a blessing to others around us. So you may be lifted up by a dream. You may be lifted up and put into a position by a dream, but the divine dream would be that that would be in order that you might be a blessing to others. See that God's dreams are for blessing. And, and I was thinking about this this week and trying to figure out how to, how to get at this with dreams. And, and, and here's, where I, here's where I am, I think, on this is that the best way to fulfill our dreams is to pursue God's dreams. And that as we pursue God's dreams, I believe our dreams will be fulfilled somehow. I believe as we pursue what God would desire, what God's dreams are for the world, our dreams will be accomplished because we'll be in line with what God's dreams are. So we... We're, we um, we come to the table this morning, and the table is, to me, it's, it's like that ladder of connection between heaven and earth. It's that stairway to heaven. I don't know if you ever thought about communion in that way, but communion is that connection point. It ties heaven and earth together because in Jesus Christ, God has poured out himself that we might find connection with God wholeness in God, that we might find blessing, God's love given for us. So at this table, we, it's one of those thin places. It's what the Celtic Christians talked about, those thin places in life where the distance between heaven and earth is really not very distant at all. And at this communion rail, we experience through this bread and through this cup God's grace, God's presence with us, given for us, to remind you that as you pursue your dreams, God is with you. You're not alone. And as you pursue those dreams, you dream godly dreams, not just your own dreams, but you strive to do that which God would have you do. And in fulfilling God's dreams, our dreams are realized. So at this table, we have this intersection, this ladder of connection, climbing Jacob's ladder, every step higher and higher. We have this point of intersection with ourselves and with God. So I invite you to come to the table today and to experience this, to, to receive this grace and to know that God is with you and God dreams great dreams for your life. God has big dreams for what you will do. Not just your own achievement, but God has big dreams for how you will bless the lives of others. So come and dream godly dreams at this table today and find that intersection between heaven and earth. Amen.